Today's passage is from Mark, chapter 12, verses 35 through 37. Now I'll read. While Jesus was teaching in the temple courts, he asked, Why do the teachers of the law say that the Messiah is the son of David? David himself, speaking by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. How then can he be his son? The large crowd listened to him with delight. That is all. Please allow me to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to be gathered here today at Minimachi Christ Church to well to worship you and to pray as well. We know that through Jesus Christ we are recreated and that we can grow in him. And we know that spiritual guidance is, is, is essential for this. We thank you for your blessing over the brothers and sisters in Christ here today. Please watch over Pastor Anjiki, uh, Joy Anjiki as he speaks today. We put everything before you, praying in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello, everyone. Today, we'll be hearing a word from God from the passage that was read just a moment ago. According to the Journal of Pediatrics, which is a magazine, um, there was an article published stating that uh, children of the age uh, 5 through 12, a total of 176, were uh, part of this survey to find out what kind of sounds they wake up to or what would uh, make them wake up in the morning. So they had a regular like uh, alarm clock go off for these children, and about 50% of the children woke up when they heard the alarm. However, there was one specific sound that they um, set off that made all, like 90% of the kids wake up. And do you know what it was? It was the voice of their mothers. <laughs> In the same way, there was a similar study done at Shiga University. According to the results of that, they found out that it took children about 310 seconds for children to respond to <laughs> uh, alarm clock, where, whereas uh, to their mother's voice, about 31 seconds, so about 10 times faster, they'd wake up to their mom's voice. You can see that a mom's voice and a mom's effort to wake up children is actually very effective. But it's not their... Um, a voice of an upset mother, but just like any any mother, so you don't need to be angry at your kids when you're trying to wake them up. And there are people who, <laughs> when children become older, it's possibly good to have a recorded uh, recording of their mother's voice so that they can wake up when they're older in life. <laughs> so you can see just how the impact is of mothers in their families. When you're thinking about who is into influential in people's lives in general, there are a number of people who are, of course. According to the Times Magazine in the U.S., they do this survey and come up with like the 100 most influential people of the year. And sometimes there's Japanese people included. According to the April edition of this, um, Prime Minister Kishida and also video game developer uh, Hideki Miyazaki were also featured in this uh, uh, influential people. It's likely next year that pro pro professional baseball player Otani will also be one, one of one of considered one of these influential people in the next year. If you think about just like a bigger scale in history of mankind, who has been the most influential person? Well, there's been studies done on this as well around the world. And there's the number one answer to this is, of course, Jesus Christ. I mean, as long as there's a, it was a genuine survey, the answer is always coming back as Jesus in the present day as well, Jesus Christ continues to be the one most influential in people's lives. 
He's been the feature of a number of um, movies shown over time as well. For example, recent ones in 2014 was like The Son of God and the sack, the the lead uh, lead actor was apparently too cool or something for this. And back in 2004 was The Passion of the Christ. And this also was featuring Jesus. And many people have seen this as well, I believe. In this uh, spring, there's going to be a sequel to The Passion. And it's uh, they've already begun filming it, I've heard. And so it'll be something to look forward to. So you can see in this way that in many ways Jesus is still in the front scene of many people's lives. So who exactly is Jesus? As I was showing you or said just a moment ago, of course, people do recognize him as being influential over the course of human history. Some people say he's the founder of Christianity. Some people say he's a great teacher or he's just a good person. There's all kinds of different answers that people give for this. However, today we're seeing who does Jesus say he is. And that's what we'll look at specifically today. We're going through the book of Mark and looking all the way up to uh, the point of Jesus' trip to the cross, going to the cross today. And today we're looking at his talking with Pharisees. We're seeing what he says to them because uh, he says, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And you might think this is an interesting phrase. It's not that you can enter the kingdom of God, but you are not far from it. That is what Jesus said. So what intention did Jesus have by saying this? Well, it's like he was, try he was trying to say that you understand my teaching, but understanding what I'm saying isn't just sufficient to get into the kingdom of God. You have to accept me as the Savior, and in that way you can truly enter the kingdom of God. And that is what he was trying to say with this, this phrase here. In those days, according to the Jews, they believed that the Messiah who was promised would be a great person, but they didn't really realize he would be God as well. According to the Pharisees, they And, and other people in those days, they didn't understand that they would have to recognize Jesus Christ as being God. In today's passage as well, Jesus is proclaiming that he is God. And from today's passage, we can, we can really reflect on who we think Jesus is. And that is why this message is titled, Who Do You, think, who do you Say Jesus Is? We have three points today. The first one is, Jesus proclaimed himself to be God. Looking in verse 35, it says, While Jesus was teaching in the temple courts, he asked, Why do the teachers of the law say that the Messiah is the son of David? In those days, the people believed the Old Test Testament that J Jesus would be born of the line of David. And in this way, they referred to him as, referred to as him as the son of David. Of course, that in and of itself is not a mistake. However, in those days, people didn't realize that he, not only would this person be born of the son of David, but he would also be God in himself. However, Jesus said that this person would be somebody greater, and he also We told them that this was already written in the Bible, and so that is what he referred to here in citing from Psalm 110. In verse 36, it says, David himself, speaking by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord. Here, this is going to actually be one of the main points today because Jesus is actually referring to one of the Psalms David wrote, Psalm 110. And here, he says, The Lord said to my Lord, right? This is talking about two, two lords, right? The first lord actually refers to Yahweh or to Father God. And the second lord that's mentioned here, my lord, is referring to my master or Adonai, which is actually referring to the Savior, Messiah. And that was what was known, uh, commonly known at that time as the meaning of the word. Jesus in this way was explaining that 
he was not only a, the a descendant of David, but also proclaiming that he has a higher status than that of just being a human being. He was somebody higher of, of authority and of nature. And that is what he's proclaiming here. In other words, Jesus was saying that the Savior was al is also God in and of himself. And that's why Jesus proclaimed in this way that he was God. In the present day, there are various people who say various things about Jesus and some people who don't believe in Jesus. And for example, there's the Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Unification Church, and so on. For example, Jehovah's Witness do not proclaim that Jesus is God. However, in the Bible, it does say very clearly that Jesus proclaims himself as God, and there are other places in the Bible that say that. For example, in John, verse 30, Jesus says, I and God are one. And when the Pharisees heard them, they were about ready to stone him. Why is it the Pharisees would want to be stoning Jesus for saying such a thing? Well, they say in John 31, we are not stoning you for any of these, replied the Jews, but for blasphemy because you, a mere man, claim to be God. In other words, they could not accept the fact that Jesus was God himself. Around the world, many people are um, very influential and they do recognize that Jesus was a great person for numerous reasons. So I want to ask you the following question. Who do you say Jesus is? According to history, is he just a great person that lived time, one time in history? Or do you believe that he's actually God? There's something that I've often heard, and that, there are th and that is that there's three possibilities. If there's someone who proclaims themselves to be God, the first possibility is they're lying. They just you know, know they're not God, and they say they are, so they're lying. The second possibility is that they believe that they are God. They're, even though they're not God, they just, for whatever reason, believe that. And that's the, the possibility. The third possibility is that they are God. If they say they are, they are. As for Jesus, which of these three possibilities applies to him? Well, let's look at the second and third point of today's sermon, and we'll review this and be able to figure out what the answer is. I'd like you to give it a, give it, uh, some thought to it. So, is Jesus really God? Well, let's look at the perspective of his teaching. Jesus' teaching was not just the regular teaching of some teacher. It was a great uh, writer of higher authority. And he, and we can realize that the Bible is still the bestseller today, even 2,000 years after Jesus' time here on earth. And it just really impacts people, and many people are impressed, and their lives change because of it. Amongst Jesus' teaching, there is the one that's referred to as the golden rule. And the, this golden rule, what exactly is it? If you look up in the, in the dictionary, it says, do says it's a common rule that is commonly understood over time by many people in many countries. And this golden rule is looking it up is actually kind of difficult because depending on the culture, there's different views on things. For example, in Japan, um, being on time is really important. However, there's other countries where that isn't so important. And to eat Everything that you've given and not wasting anything is one custom we have, but there's some countries where it's best to leave some on your plate. And also in Japan, it's common to make a lot of noise when you're in, uh, drinking or eating uh, noodles. However, in other countries, that's extremely rude. So everybody, many cultures have different kinds of values and different rules in light of that. 
So to look for a common rule around the world is almost nearly impossible. Amongst that, though, over history and amongst various civilizations, there is one rule that seems to fit basically everyone, and that is to don't do to others what you wouldn't want done to yourself. And it's likely you've possibly heard or learned this rule yourself. And you've probably heard it at least one time, if not more. This rule is actually one that is commonly taught in all, in most countries or、uh, cultures around the world. For example, Confucius says, do not give to others what you don't want. And in Hinduism, it says, don't do anything to anyone that you wouldn't want done to yourself. And as for、uh, Islam or Muslim religion, if you don't want people to harm you, then don't harm them. So these are common ways of thinking, the golden rules around the world. Don't do anything bad to others that you wouldn't want done to yourself. And this is something that also can help protect the society. However, what Jesus taught in the Bible is a rule that is actually a different. Positive way of looking at the same concept. And that is actually in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. So, in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. In other words, do to others what you would want done to yourself. He was, Jesus wasn't focusing on negative a s p e c t of don't do what you wouldn't want done, but And you would have to think, well, which is easier to obey? To, well, it's more difficult to proactively do something positive for others rather than to not just do something that you wouldn't want done. But in doing something positive, you can have an even greater effect. So Jesus was taking one, one step or one perspective above that which was common in the world. And also, and amongst Jesus' teaching, There are different moral teachings that are a higher level than others. For example, loving others as yourself or、uh, to forgive your enemies. The people who teach these types of things, or this type of teaching that Jesus、uh, was doing, is it really reflective of somebody who either was lying about being God or believing that they were God? Well, let's look at the final third point to do as well. Jesus' work. Let's think about this aspect. As I just explained in Jesus' teaching on his time here on earth, he obviously lived his life. So let's think about how he did. In the Jewish、uh, society at that time, he did a lot of things that were actually、um, broke the conventional wisdom of the, the society at that time. For example, in the Jewish society at that time, there was a very strict line between p- healthy people and sick people, and it was not permissible to interact with sick people. However, in those days, Jesus took the liberty of、uh, reaching out to these sick people and healing them. Also, there was a strict rule about how women were not to interact with men or vice versa. And Jesus also reached out to women in need as well. He showed his grace to them. Also, there was a very strict social boundary about interacting with Gentiles, and Jesus too reached out to this group of people. He also reached out to Samaritans who were enemies,、uh, and to the Romans as well, who were also enemies at that time. Uh, Jesus' love was something that was also in,、uh, reflected on his death on the cross when he was actually praying for the people who were killing him. He said, Jesus, please、uh, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. In this way, Jesus was even praying for and reaching out to those who were killing him. In this way, Jesus was exceeding the, the social boundaries of the, that day and was 
teaching all kinds of concepts and moral values that didn't exist at that time. How is it that Jesus was able to learn and then t teach such values? Well, amongst the teachers at the, in those days, there was the thought that Jesus must have learned these things in Roman culture. And he must have taught them and applied it in the Jewish society. However, we realize now that that concept or that way of thinking is not correct because in Roman uh, history, there was no such um, moral teaching at that time. And because of that, in the later days, Christians actually impacted the Romans and changed things. Why is it that Jesus? was able to teach these very deep moral standards that were not prevalent or not the concepts at that time. It's because he was the true God. He had faith. There was no other way that he would have been able to do this. Jesus was the Son of God and God himself. Jesus came as a person here to this earth and came to teach the values of heaven. In history thereafter, many people have been greatly impressed by what his teaching was and gender equality and other social issues have been addressed in light of his teaching. When Jesus even in today, when it's 2,000 years since Jesus has been here, many countries are still uh, basing their concept of what social equality is on what Jesus taught years ago. This is also true in Japan. In Japan as well, the concept of social equality and getting rid of... Um, <laughs> sorry, that's my daughter. <laughs> In Japan as well, the concepts of social equality are are professed and and not being mean to people of different uh, uh, races is not appreciated. And actually, many of these concepts are actually based on Jesus' teaching, but many people aren't aware that that's where these ideas came from. So we've looked at Jesus' work and when thinking about this, if there was somebody who was lying about being God, would they really go to all that effort to do such work? Is it really, could that even be a possibility? There was one person who wrote a description of Jesus Christ's profile. He was born in Israel 2,000 years ago as the son of a carpenter. And when he was young, he had no special education. Until age 30, he was working as a carpenter himself. Then he spent a few years, only three years, to three and a half years to be exact, in the professional world. He never had a house and never had a family. He was never in a major city and actually never went more than 300 kilometers away from the city he was born. In the end, he was captured by Rome and, and killed. In years thereafter, though, he has greatly impacted the world. He never wrote a book himself. And, however, the number of copies of this book could not be contained in a single building anywhere. He never wrote a song, but people around the world continue to write songs about him. He never drew a picture, but all of many of his words have been greatly reflected in various forms of artwork since then. He never was went to uh, receive great education or went to university, but there are many universities that are built based on him. He was not a medical doctor, but in the following years, many people have built hospitals because of him. Also, many people have greatly impressed because of what Jesus has done, reaching out to 
focus on social equality and stop racism and so other social issues. If we had rem if we choose to remove all the impact Jesus Christ has made in the world since he was here, there would be pretty much nothing left. So once again, I ask you, who do you say Jesus is? Jesus professed himself as being God. And he would take all of humanity's sin upon him on the cross. The Pharisees heard what Jesus said, and they And Jesus replied, saying, You are not far from the kingdom of God. There may be some of you who have come to church because you've been impressed with other people who believe in him. However, I encourage you, if you haven't already, to profess faith in Christ. I want you to seriously consider, consider who you say Jesus is. to profess him as your savior, he is God, and to make that decision. So when you follow Jesus Christ, your life will be greatly changed. I do want to share one thing with you before I close today. In the 19th century in the UK, there was a person, a Christian, uh, a person by the name of Hugh Price Hughes, and there was a famous uh, atheist by the name of Charles Bradlow, and they had this debate trying to figure out whose uh, belief, in a sense, which was correct. Hughes said, I understand what you're saying. And uh, I, I would like you to. I would think we should both bring proof to see which um, of us has a correct um, um, belief. You know, I, I'll bring a hundred people who've been greatly changed by believing in Jesus Christ to this to see. And and I want you to the atheist to bring a uh, hundred people also saying because of atheism their lives have been completely changed. In the end, they didn't have the debate because. Charles Bradlow wasn't able to come up with a single person whose life had been positively impacted because they were an atheist, and that included himself. In the present day, people who come, come to know Jesus Christ have had their lives greatly changed, and there's testimony of this around the world. It's likely that when you think about your life, you can realize this as well. Since believing in Jesus Christ, your life has likely changed in many positive ways, and you you are now can have give testimony of that. If there are some of you who don't have that testimony yet, I encourage you that as you live out your life for Christ and look back, that it's likely you will be able to realize things have greatly changed. When you meet Jesus Christ, your life is changed, and that testimony in and of itself does show how Jesus really is God, and that perhaps is one of the greatest testimonies there is. I would like to close by seeing uh, one of the verses from John. John was one of Jesus' disciples, and he also. Wrote clearly about that here in John one one through five, and specifically in verse one, it's reflecting on who Jesus is. John one one through five, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Skipping down, uh, he was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Please allow me to pray. Dear Heavenly Father. 
Thank you for this opportunity to be able to worship you today. Today, we remembered how Jesus has professed himself as being God. We know that in looking over human history, Jesus truly has been a person who has greatly impacted humanity. In Japan, however, right now, there's still not a even 1% of the people who profess faith in Christ. There's many people who are walking their lives not even knowing or being able to answer who Jesus is. Amongst these people, there's likely many who are friends or family members of ourselves who have been uh, invited to church over the years. I encourage uh, people to reach out to family members and friends again and encourage them to think about who Jesus is. At that time, Jesus, I pray that you will reveal yourself as Savior to them, allowing them to be able to profess faith in you. Lord, I pray that you will be working in the hearts of many people. And I encourage these people to be able to make decisions for you and to have, in turn, their lives changed where they look back and they can realize that since they have decided to make the decision to follow you, that their lives will be changed not only now for a, bless for a blessing in this world, but in that which is to come. We thank you for this, Lord. We know that as we have already been, who have already been saved, it is our responsibility to share the gospel with the other people. Allow us to do so. We thank you for this opportunity, praying in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's pray for a moment together in silence. 